Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. We're getting close to the end for our AB students. Today we're going to do the same type of thing we've been doing with rev uh, solids of revolution, but this time there's something else that we're adding on to it. So let's start off with this familiar area that we've been doing. You have a square root of x and a y equals x squared, and it's going to cross uh, right there at 1, 1. Now we're going to revolve this region around the x-axis. So let's think about this. If I take this region and revolve it around the x-axis, I need the mirror image. So let me sketch that real quick. So something like that. So I have now the mirror image of this thing. And what is this going to look like? Well, notice you have a blank spot underneath the, the region. So here is our axis of revolution. So we're revolving it around this thing, right? Going around like that. And that's going to leave a gap in the solid that is created. So as you come around here, let's try and create a little circle here, a little oval shape to, to hopefully visualize a little bit about what's, what's going on. So here's my shape, it's kind of hard to see it, but notice there is going to be a hole inside here. So if, if I were to spin this around and then, so let, hold on, we're gonna connect this over here. So we're kind of spinning it, making a circle, making a circle. And you have this interesting shape, but if I were to take a, a uh, cross section, split it right down the middle like that and take a cross section and open it up, what would it look like? So it would be a circle because I just went around in a circle, but instead of it being just a solid circle, there is something going on in the middle here, right? There's a gap. So you'd only have this part would be filled in. So my blue on the outside, like a donut, or in other words, a washer. Think about when you put something together, like if you have a bicycle and you're putting the bolts back on a bicycle, you have a washer that goes underneath it. So these washers, or you're putting something together from Ikea, you have this washer goes underneath the bolt or the screw that goes on, and that has a hole in it. That's why this is called a washer method, because when you take a cross section and look at it, it's a washer. Whereas before, our other lessons, what we did is it would just be a full circle, and that was considered a disc method, because it just looks like a solid disc. Okay, so before the last couple lessons, we did discs. Now we're doing washer. The only difference is you do the whole thing like a disk method, and then you just have to subtract this thing right here was in red. I subtract the missing gap. So in here, on my uh, on my line here, get rid of this red, that would be this part of it right here. So what's in red is the missing. Let me show you on a little applet what I'm talking about. So here I have the exact same graph, that's the region, and as I revolve this, it revolves, and that's kind of hard to follow, but you can see there's that, just that one piece of area is revolving around. Let me do that again and move it this way just a little bit so you can see. So you can, it's kind of hard to tell with just this, but you can see it's just the outside piece of it. It's not, the whole thing is not solid. There is a hole inside there. So if I slice it right down the middle of this thing, take a little slice, you'd see there will be a gap on that. So let's set up the volume integral. So volume is going to be, let's do the whole thing first. So like if we're doing the disk method. So we'd go from, what's my re, my uh, boundaries are from 0 to 1 for the x value, so 0 to 1. And then I do pi r squared. So my radius squared is this outside of the object. Which one is that one? Square root or x squared? That's the square root. So this right here is my capital R, my big radius. So I'm going to say the square root of x squared with respect to x. So I just took the volume of the whole thing. So that would be like the disk. Now I need to subtract what's on the inside, the missing piece in red. So I want to subtract the volume from 0 to 1 of this other little uh, curve revolved around in a circle. So pi r squared, but in this case it's going to be a little r because it's the small radius, it's to the inside of the object of, of what we're missing, where it's just gonna be air, it's a gap. So that's x squared with respect to x. Now we can simplify this down more. So volume is going to equal zero to one pi of square root of x and squared is just an x dx minus zero to one. And then this is pi x to the fourth dx. Now, when we both when you have pi's on both of them, and they're both integrated from 0 to 1, what we really can do is simplify this to the following. So this is the last part for this. We're not going to actually find the volume. I just want you to just set it up on for the lesson. In the practice, you will find the volume. So be aware of that you have to do the anti-differentiation. So here we go. Uh, pi, I can pull to the front. 
Let's pull the pi in front of the integral. And then I go from zero to one. So it's almost like you're just combining these two integrals. And then what do I have? I have an x minus the x to the fourth with respect to x. So it all becomes one integral. Since I'm integrating from zero to one, they both have pi's. I can just put it all together. So that leads us to uh, the formula for volume of a solid when there is a missing gap right there. That is this. So we just did this part. We take pi big R squared minus, and then the same integral from A to B of pi little r squared, it's a little radius, and then you can combine that to this thing. You have the capital R squared minus little r squared. And here's what our big R and little r stand for. The big R is the big radius. It goes to the outside of the object that we're revolving. And the little r is the small radius. It goes to the inside of the object. Most textbooks and most uh, teachers will just teach this, which is absolutely fine. I like to focus on this one first because it helps you understand that you're doing a, the radius of each one separately. You're finding the volume of the whole thing, and then you're subtracting the volume of the little thing, the little radius. The reason I say that is because the most common mistake I see on these is not squaring the radius individually. Let me repeat that because you might want to write that down. The mistake is making sure, or excuse me, not the mistake, but the thing that you need to do is square each radius individually. Do not do a quantity squared. This is the mistake where they do this. Little r of x of x. Big r of x minus little r of x quantity squared. That is wrong. Don't do that. Okay, this is what it's supposed to be. Little uh, Big r squared minus little r squared with respect to x. Notice where I put the pi. Don't lose track of that pi. That pi I just put on the outside uh, because... Uh, you know, you're allowed to take the constant to the front, which is fine. Just don't forget about it. You, when you're done, multiply by the pi. That's another common mistake. Okay, our lesson's pretty much over. Let's just do one more example real quick with respect to y, and then I think we're good. So here we have this region. Let's figure out what the graph is doing. We are going to draw this line here, do the mirror image, and we're going to revolve this this way. So I'm going to make a kind of a oval shape. Oh my goodness, this is hard to use this electronic pad. Messing this up. Okay, so there's our shape. And you can see the open white space here. This is the hole. If we do the a, a cross section, you'd have the washer. This is the open gap. Now, since we're doing it with the, on the y-axis, we need equations with respect to y. So y minus one equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides. It is gonna be a plus or minus y minus one equals x, but I only want this right side, right? I'm, I'm just doing this one. That's the one that I started with and I'm revolving it. So I can just say that x is equal to the square root of y minus one. And then how about this one? So let's solve for, get x by itself on this one, y minus one, and then divide everything by two. I get y over two minus one half equals x. All right, let's set it up. So I take pi, and then I go from the lowest y value, the lowest y value is right there, that's a one, to the highest y value, the highest y value here is a five. And then I need to take my big radius. Notice I don't have to put the pi because I already put it out front. So my big radius squared minus my little radius squared with respect to x. So what is the big radius? The big radius, I'm going to go from the middle of where I'm revolving to the outside of the object. That's the big radius. What's the curve on the outside of the object? That is the, the curved one. So which one's that one? This one. That is my big R. So that's so the square root of y minus 1. Square root of y minus 1. And then my little r is to the inside. So that's my big R. That's my little r. My little r is just there to the inside of the object, which in this case is this one. There's my little r. And so that's solved for this. So I have y over 2 minus 1 over 2. And then there's my answer. This is it. That's the setup. Yes, you could work out some more. Maybe the square root and the squared would cancel y minus 1. This one, you'd have to do a quantity squared and, and uh, kind of foil it out, multiply it all out. That gets a little confusing, distributing the negative. But the main point of this was setting up the integral, and we got it. Now, for the lesson, for many of the problems, you will have to solve uh, the whole thing, leave it in terms of pi. But you've got the gist of it. So let me remind you real quick, what was the point of this lesson? We did the disk method, and then we took out the whole. We subtract this thing in the middle.
So we're still revolving it around the x-axis or the y-axis, and then we subtract what's the missing part of the volume. In our next lesson, we're just going to take the same thing but shift it. We might be shifting left, right, up or down. If it's on the x-axis, we might shift it up or down and just do it around a different line. And that's the only difference. And that'll be the last thing we got to work on for, for this, for the AB kits. And then one more lesson after that for my BC kits. All right, we are done for today. So rock that mastery check. I'll see you back in our next lesson.